Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday, January the 26th. It's, uh, it's about 9 o'clock at night. Uh, been a long day. I've been trying to get some more, a uh, couple of videos done and been really super busy. Got my brother out of the hospital after five, five plus months. Uh, he was in there with COVID pneumonia. He got to come home yesterday. Oh, uh, which is great. Uh, he's got a little ways to go in his recovery, but he's going to be okay, looks like. Uh, going to do a rev uh, somewhat of a review. What I always do, I'm, I'm working on this uh, self-defense, choosing your weapon. Uh, this is going to be volume six. Um, we're going to look at a G3C today, uh, Taurus G3C. But before we go there, though, uh, on a couple of my other videos, I, I touched on the price of ammo. Um, it, it went up once, and I documented that. It's went up again. These uh, these low brass, cheapest shotgun shells that you can find. Uh, seven and a half shot. 12 gauge at Walmart. Uh, they went from 547 to something like seven. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. To something like seven fifty nine or something. Uh, now they're eight ninety eight. Oh, so I hope that some of you guys maybe watched some of my videos and saw me talking about that and saw me uh, saying predicting that these was going to go up more. They have this this inflation. It's a wearing us out. Um, and this price hike has sort of made a difference on the availability of them. I've noticed they've got them every time at Walmart anymore. Um, maybe there's a few more things factors into that too, but uh, they'll go up more. It's not done. So I still recommend when you go, uh, and I've talked about people that like to shoot shotguns, they usually only have seven and a half or eight shot. Um, you know, I like to squirrel hunt, so you need like a five or six shot for that. If you see those, certainly get them. But, you know, if you like to shoot skeet and stuff, um, you better be getting these shotgun shells. It, it, we've already waited. They're all, they've already went up like what? Um, they've already went up about 65% in the last three or four months. Um, I just can't stress it enough, guys. It's just going to cost you more down the road. You can get them and put them in dry storage boxes, keep some air moving or, and stuff, and they, they're no problem to store. So that's something I hope you guys will think about and consider doing. You can't have too many, in my opinion. Uh, of course, that's just me. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Everybody's got to do their own thing. Got to make your own way. Uh, the Taurus G3C. Guys, if you're looking for a if you're a man, woman, if you're big or small, uh, if you had real huge hands, this might be a gun. That might be a problem. But the Taurus G3C is just, uh, it's fantastic. It is great. I've put several hundred rounds through this now. Um, when I first bought this gun, I had a problem with my front sight. That is, I done, I think, a video on it. And then I think I done two follow-up videos. It was about as minor as you could possibly imagine. Uh, Taurus sent me the new site for free, fixed it. It's not, this has ran flawless. It has been perfect. I'm going to load this because I like to practice what I preach. I do think we should practice what we preach very much in life. If you don't, then people just, why would anybody even give any consideration whatsoever to what you talk about? So yeah, you can see this gun is unloaded. Magazine's out. Now I believe in keeping your weapon loaded. I'm just saying to do a video. I think it's, I think we can't. I, I, there's no way to overstress. You cannot be too safe with a firearm. Um, always assume it's loaded. Check it if you're going to do anything with it other than carry it. Check it. You know you just cannot. You cannot be too safe. And as I said, you can, always assume it's loaded. If you're going to clean it, if you're going to show it to somebody, drop your mag. And always make sure you have uh, ejected the shell that's in the chamber. Just, just like this right here, you know, visually, 
visually check and make sure. Um, you, you just don't want accidents with these firearms, guys. First of all, for your own health and for your friends and family and people around you. Um, but also on another front, we're under the micros microscope to no end by the people that wants to take away our rights. Um, and any time we make a mistake, they use that against us. Anytime anybody is careless, you know, uh, you hear the old saying, one bad apple could ruin the bunch. We've got to be top-notch professionals in handling our firearms. That's just where we are. None of us knows everything. Uh, we, I think we all learn things daily. We have to do the absolute best that we can, always. And, and keeping your keeping your firearm like this right here when you're cleaning or dealing with it or showing it to somebody or doing a video on YouTube over it, that's what we need to do. We need to practice what we preach. We need to set a good example for others. So I want to get that out of the way. Um, in my last video, I talked about overpenetration on our ammo choices. And uh, that's something I, I kind of want to touch. So I want to stress that. If you live in an apartment complex or a subdivision um, and you load your gun with uh, something like this, these, these full metal jacket this rounds, these really have extremely good penetration. They'll go through a wall. Um, so you got to be super careful. If you live in a place like that that's very populated or whatever, I, I strongly suggest get you some hollow points, get you some home defense rounds, uh, several different names, depends on who makes them. Go to the range with some of those, and they're expensive. They're a little more expensive, but you have to test them in your firearm. Whatever firearm you have chosen um, as your self-defense weapon, you, you have to put some of those rounds through it every so often. You know, you want to make sure that the, your gun will feed them. Because they can be a little bit picky sometimes with hollow point rounds. You know, like a like a full metal jacket, you've got this nice round nose, you know, you got this nice round nose bullet, they just they just feed easier versus a hollow point. And uh, you know, I've I've got full metal jacket in this. Um, but I live sort of off. I mean, there there is a couple of houses here, but uh, they're they're not <laughs> right beside me or uh, to where I worry about that. And they're actually only on one side of my house. Three sides of my house is woods. So, but now I do have some home defense rounds, uh, and I actually have some mixed in my magazine. Um. But it's something you really want to consider. It's something you really want to look into and put a lot of thought into. Oh, but the Taurus G3C, or, or for as far as that goes, the G2C, these are just fantastic pistols. They have the external safety. A lot of people like the external safety. I, I like the external safety. You can load this, put one in the chamber, Flip this up, and, and it can't fire. It cannot fire. It's got a full-blown external safety. And then what you got to do if you if you was to get one of these guns and carry it like this, you've got to make a habit of uh, when you go to the range of practice, you've got to go make a habit of taking your gun out of your holster and just make it second nature to flip that down. Now you can do it right there with your. You can do it right there if you're right-handed. Uh, now, if you're left-handed, that might be a problem. This, this does not have ambidextrous safety. So that's something to consider. There's just so much to consider. If you're left-handed, you're, you know, in recent years, they've made guns more ambidextrous. You know, they've thought about left-handed people more. But firearms are mostly dominated. The market is dominated uh, for people that's right-handed. It still is. This is an excellent example of that. Um so my son's left-handed so that's something to consider uh, and that's something you have no choice but to consider if you're left-handed uh, so you want to look at that but yeah the g3c this is really very very reliable weapon you know if you get this if you get one of these guns i the experience i had was this front sight was loose i would recommend look at that but really whatever gun you get check it out you know People spend 20 hours a day messing around with their cell phone. 
you, you just have to have something in your hands. You know, if you're anywhere you are, if you ain't doing something, people will come out with their cell phone, and a game or something. Something that in no way helps their life. It just passes their time. They, everybody has to have something to do all the time. Having said that, and having, and, and I believe that with all my heart because I see it all day, every day, you, you can take time and master whatever gun you buy. You can, you can just have it second nature. You can just get it where you can just close your eyes and you know whatever lever is, whatever, everything you feel on that gun, you know what it is. So why not do it? It might save your life. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, if you make the choice to get some personal protection, if you go that far, if you, if you make that choice and do that, then taking the additional steps and mastering it, I mean, just being absolutely knowing it inside and out, doesn't cost you anything more. It just You just have to apply yourself. And it's fun. It's all, it's all fun and it's all good and it can save your life, it can save your wife's, your kids, your families, your friends, some strangers. I mean, it could just be the greatest decision that you ever make if you're unlucky enough to run into some kind of problem. And you probably won't. You probably will not run into a problem, but you could. So why not be ready? Why not be ready? These Taurus G3Cs, mine came with three magazines, three 12-round magazines. Um, and um, if you've watched my other videos, I always talk about your holster. Um, when you purchase your firearm, you have to make that decision also. How are you going to carry this weapon? If you don't have the weapon with you, it's no, it's of no benefit. You know, you may decide you just, you just want one to put in your, uh, the dashboard of your car. If that's the case, you may need to get a pistol pouch or something. You also need to look into the concealed carry laws. Some places, you have, I think you have to have a concealed carry license to have a, a firearm in your glove box of your car locked up. Matter of fact, I'm sure you do in some states. Uh, so all that stuff, that's on you to know. It's on you to be a professional. It's on you to master your weapon. It's, it's on you to be a professional pertaining to the laws in your state. And any state you're going to be going to if you travel. We want the law on our sides. You know, we're not, uh, we're not trying to make trouble, never. You know, you don't never want to get in a gunfight, obviously. Uh, but, but you know, I, I like to, the reason I mention that is I, I like to open carry. You know, you got to decide if you're going to open carry or try to conceal carry. I like to open carry just because it's more comfortable. I don't like a pistol tucked down in the waistband of my pants. I, I just never like that, not even small pistols. Um, and when you open carry, some people frown on that. And that, that's why I mentioned what I said there. You're not out looking for trouble. You're just, it's just the easiest way for me to carry. Um, I'm not trying to make a statement that I'm some kind of bad egg or something like that. That's not what it's about. It's just simply the easiest way for me to have a weapon because I'm not a bad egg. I can't, I can't fight. i uh, too old to fight. I'm too old to run. Um, but I am going to be able to defend myself if somebody gives me no choice. That's, that's where we are. Uh, when we decide to become gun owners and have personal protection. And this is all my opinion. You may have a different opinion. Everybody has to do and live their life how they feel best for them. You can't let other people tell you what's right and what's wrong as far as carrying. Um, and you have to make your own choices on what gun fits your hand. So much goes into it. And I've been, this, this little series of videos I've been doing. Uh, I'm trying to bring some of the most basic, simple thought process to uh, the decision to become an armed citizen. That's, that's what I'm trying to do because the simple things is what people overlook. Uh, the simple things are what causes all the problems, all the chaos, all the mess. It's always the most simple things, almost every time. So, so that's what I'm trying to bring to my channel, um, and I hope people will... It would tickle me to death to, to, to think that some people got some stuff out of out of uh, my, my YouTube channel. There's so many good weapons out there. Uh, I watch I watch uh, I handle guns all all the time. My dad's got a gun shop. 
I just see all kinds of different guns, new guns. I see so many guns I like. I've got several guns of my own that I have purchased. Oh, and I see people coming and trying to make these choices, and I see women coming, and I think I touched on this before, I know I did, but can't overstress it. Can't, you just can't talk about it too much. I see women coming. They see little tiny pistols, and they think those are made for women. Uh, that's just everything about the little tiny pistols. They're harder to operate in every way because they are small. They're harder to shoot because they're small. They have more recoil because they're small. Uh, it's just the exact opposite in, in the real world. Um, and I always try to go over that if I'm by, by any chance that my dad's working uh, at my father's gun shop working and, and sell some, you know, help them sell some guns. Nothing pleases me more than to see somebody get the gun that they feel good about. And, and nothing is more disappointing to me than to see somebody come in and, like women, come in and see a pink gun, a little pink Taurus PT380 or something. Is that what they're called? I think that's what they're called. And they're falling in love with them and buy them, and I feel like they're not going to be satisfied with it, you know, but maybe they will. Maybe they will. I hope so. I try to go over everything I can with them and, and, and ignite that thought process. <clears throat> but if you're going to conceal carry, man or woman, certainly the smaller pistol is the way to go, of course. Um, it's just basic simple simplicity. The smaller it is, the easier you can carry it. But the Taurus, this particular Taurus D3C is just really right in the right in the middle. It's just a really good gun for a lot of people, I feel like. Uh, now you have to go and see how it fits your hand. If you could get a range where you can rent firearms and, and you know, take some shots. That's the ultimate way to figure out if, you, if a gun's going to work for you or not. And uh, if you can only buy one gun, there's so many things to consider. This would be a great choice. This is a gun that you could, it's, it's, going, to have, it's going to last, it's going to be durable if you want to put a lot of rounds through it at the range often. Um, it's going to function great. You can get on YouTube, there's just tons of reviews and these guns have a great reputation. They are just great, very solid. Have been for years now. Um, just just can't, uh, their feet are loaded. Um, I touched on the external safety. You know, like the Glock 48s and things, they don't, you can't get an external safety on them. And uh, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. It really is. These guns are, I don't know, $350 or less, I think, right now. I saw um, a letter today, they're having a $25 mail-in rebate when you buy one of these Taurus G3Cs. And today's January the 26th. I don't know when that starts. I, I wanna say it starts this weekend. Um, but if you're in the market for one and watch this video, you can get on Taurus' website and check that out. You could call Taurus, uh, or you could call your local gun shop, see if they got them and see how much they are. You, know. you have to do, nobody can do all this stuff for you. Uh, I certainly, will provide any information I can on my channel to try to help people. <clears throat> but I also, uh, I also feel like sometimes helping people hurts them. Uh, people, you have to do for yourself. So, of course, now if you get on YouTube and start researching, then you are doing for yourself. Uh, but still, uh, you can call your local dealer and see if they've got them, see how much they are. Because what they are here doesn't, you know, I'm in Kentucky. If you're in South Carolina, the prices are, they may be totally different. I don't know. <clears throat> what I can tell you, though, is this is a very good, very reliable, very effective weapon. If you choose, if this fits your hand and you go this route, I think you'll be pleased. I would strongly suggest getting a holster that works for you. This holster works for me. It fits good. The gun doesn't try to stick and pull the holster up when you come out with it. It's also got a place to carry an extra mag. Uh, this is made by Mealtech USA. Uh, there's a place I think called Uncle's, Uncle Mike's that's got these softer holsters like this. These holsters carry fantastic. They just feel so good. Um, in my other videos you saw, I've got like a paddle holsters, the hard plastic paddle holsters for my Glock 26. I've got one for my Glock 48. I've got some more too. The TX22, I think that's what I've got. Those are good too. They all have their advantages. As long as you're standing up, those feel fine. But when you sit down, that hard plastic wants to dig into your side. 
So a uh, holster is a big part of your firearm purchase. I want to get that message out there. I want to get that message out there. Uh, the type of ammo you choose, I want to beat on that a little bit more. That's a big. That's something you got to consider when you uh, decide to start carrying. Uh, <clears throat> your local laws, your concealed carry laws, all that you need to know everything. If you're, if you could get a concealed carry license in your state, go and do that. It's not all that expensive. If you can afford a firearm, you can afford to do that. Even if, uh, even if they have a right to carry law or whatever in the state. You can still go get your concealed carry license because that applies to more than uh, just a pistol. Concealed deadly weapon can be all kinds of stuff. When you go get that license, that just puts the law on your side a little bit more. And it's very educational. You'll, you will learn many, many things if you go do it, I promise. Um, we'll touch on something else I've not touched on yet. I've, t I've said that I like to shoot twice a month. I like to go every other weekend and put a few rounds, a low round count, through my weapon that I'm carrying at that particular time. And I switch weapons quite a bit, but I've carried this for a while now. Also, cleaning your weapon. You need to clean your weapon. Every time you go shoot it, you need to come home. And, and as I mentioned before here, the safety can't be too safe. Keep that gun pointed in a safe direction. Drop your magazine. Make sure you empty this chamber. Just check it out thoroughly. Check it again. Check it again. And make that just second nature. Just make that... Just make that a part of your life. That's how you do it. And never overlook that most simple steps when you get ready to clean your gun or whatever. Uh, because it's always the most simple things that gets us, as I said earlier. If you start looking at accidents and things, it's always the most simple things. It's the most simple things or a lack of communication if there's someone else involved. It's just the way the, this world is. I don't know why, but that's that's what, what we see. I tried to keep this under 20 minutes, and I'm already at 22. Um... So yeah, keep your weapon clean. Um, they make, uh, I think they're called snap caps. If you want to practice dry firing, you know, the trigger for you new shooters, being able to shoot accurately, the way that trigger feels to you is very important part of that. And when you start shooting, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you've not shot before, probably most of you have shot more than me. Probably a better shooter than I am. Uh, but I do pretty good. Um, but... They make snap caps, I think that's what they're called, that you can practice because I still don't think it's good to dry fire your, your firearm. And I see people do it all the time on YouTube videos and things. Some some people that I feel like are very knowledgeable gun people. Uh, so I don't really know. I mean, uh, I was kind of brought up on hammer-fired guns. And these striker-fired guns, maybe they do soak that up better. But I, I still, myself, and, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but at least look into it. It might be something you want to consider if you're going to sit around and practice getting a feel for your trigger and snap it. You may want to get some of those practice. They're just practice rounds is what they are. But I've never used them. I, I'll take sometimes, I'll take a pencil and put it in the, in the barrel, you know, you know, after I've, as I said, made sure my gun's empty and stuff. If I'm going to practice with my trigger, and let the uh, striker hit this eraser, and that that will soak it up. You just don't want that. In my mind, it's not good for that striker to to that, have that abrupt slam like that, and not hit nothing. I, I just can't help but believe that's bad for it. I could be wrong about that, so you make your own choice on that. Just I want that thought process to go through your mind. So you're responsible for your your firearm and how you treat it. But if I can help bring some things to your attention, that's what I want to do. Taurus G3, uh, they also make this in full size. They make a Taurus G3, this, the, this is the G3C, and they make a G2C. Uh, any of them is great. Uh, you got, that's a gun I would strongly recommend looking at if you're going down this road. And I hope you do go down this road. I want us all to be armed and packing. I think that makes a safer society. But guys, that's all I've got. I've already went a little bit over tonight. Um, trying to bring more content to my channel and just life is busy right now i always thought the older you get the more free time you'd have well i'm 51 uh every day it's 16 17 18 hours a day um, and i don't really know why i mean it's just i don't know maybe you start realizing you've got less time left as you get older and you try to make more out of it i don't know but 
anyway, I'm going to get more to my channel. Uh, I always mention uh, we're, we're, we're working on a shooting range. We're going to have it ready here in the spring. Guys, I hope you all have a good rest of the week. Have a good weekend. Stay warm. Stay safe. Practice firearm safety. Uh, think about the type of round you're going to use. Get you a good holster that you're comfortable carrying. You've got to have your weapon with you. It ain't no good. Uh, uh, guys, if you like that, I hope you can get something out of this. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.